All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of No Man's Sky. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault here today. And we're going to... Now that... <coughs> excuse me. Waypoint's launched. And we got that 4.0 update that has fundamentally changed a lot of things in the game. We're going to take a look at playing a game through normal mode, which is what most people play the game on. From the beginning just to see how to get things started up. I just did a quick startup guide a couple months ago, and I have a feeling it is obsolete now. So let's get going here and get through this initial startup. Well, just like the original game, the uh, initial startup is going to require us to do some basic uh, resource gathering. And we're going to have to fix a couple pieces of equipment. So, here we go. So we're going to need a little ferrite dust. We're going to need sodium. We're going to need oxygen. And we're going to need um, carbon, of course. All right, so we've got our initial ferrite. Let's go ahead and repair that. Now we can hit L3 and look for some sodium, and there's some up here. Perfect. So in the meantime, while we're heading up there, we're definitely going to gather a little carbon. Just a little more. A little dihydrogen too, because that is definitely going to be important. There's a sodium, a single plant, huh? There's some more this way. We'll go get that too. Now this, uh, we're going to do this run through. It's going to be dupe free. We're not going to dupe anything in this. We're going to do it the uh, old fashioned hard way to show how the game can be progressed through without, you know, if you just want to play legit, which a lot of people do. A lot of people like to play the game legit. I do. I mean, it's, it's challenging and all that in the beginning, but once you get moving, it's pretty easy. You know, you can really just bull your way through it. Um, but I'm playing it legit. You know, you're going to want to take a little extra time to do stuff like check out these little containers. You're going to get stuff in there that is hugely helpful. And let's gather a little more sodium. And then we'll recharge our hazard protection. Whoa. Almost fell in a hole there. All right, so charging up our hazard protection. Got that done, that's perfect. Oh, look, there's some more sodium this way. And there's our starship over that way. Well, we're going to head right to our starship. That's going to be our initial thing. Because once we get our starship, we can hop inside of it to refresh our um, hazard protection. 
let's go ahead and do that. It's a little bit of a hike, but not too far. Sodium over here. Yep, there it is. Now I heard that they uh, added more sodium plants to the game, like more planets are going to have more sodium available, but I think you get less per plant or something like that. I don't know. I don't know if I read that correctly. But it does seem to have a decent amount of them right here. We're going to grab this oxygen too, because I know we're going to need that right off the bat when we have to build our portable refiner early on. That'll help get things moving. Let's go ahead and gather that up. There we go. Here's our ship and some more oxygen. There's always a few oxygen plants near your ship, so if you're running low on O2, just head to your ship. You know you're going to find some there. Why is everything glitching out on me? Weird. Goodbye, plant. Okay. So, let's check this iteration out, and... Oh, it looks different now. Looks kind of cool. Alright, so we go through all this initial... BS to get things started. Now we have to investigate the crash ship. It's going to have a couple things that are broken that we're going to have to fix. We'll have to go find a hermetic seal, fix the uh, launch thrusters, as well as the pulse drive. So let's get on that real quick here. Blah, blah, blah. We're just going to go ahead and connect the exosuit. We'll ignore the log. If you want to read the log, you can read it. So hermetic seal and metal plating is needed. So metal plating. And here's our old. Thing. We're gonna need a little more ferrite dust for that. And the hermetic seal. I think we find that after we make the metal plating. Let's gather this goop up. Get a couple nanites to get us started. and work on getting some ferrite dust. And we'll take a little extra because we will need it. Ferrite dust, carbon, oxygen. Those are the building blocks of pretty much everything else in the game, along with the uh, sodium. See, look, we gotta fill up our beam with carbon. Go ahead and grab a little bit more just to make up for what we used. And gather some more ferrite dust. Now you always start off on a world that's pretty crappy. You're not going to start off on a parasite planet. You're going to start off on something that's toxic, hot, cold. Maybe radioactive, depends. And there will be storms, so... And the storm doesn't start until you're on your way, I think, to get the Hermetic Seal, so... In the beginning, it'll behoove you a little bit to gather up as much stuff as possible. And as you can see, we're just going to town here. I see a uh, hazardous plant over here. Whoop, overheated. Gonna kill that hazardous plant, get a little extra oxygen. I think we're gonna need about 30 of that for for the portable refiner, if I remember right. I know we need 30 of it for something. A little extra carbon. All right, life is good. So let's head back to the ship. And we will make our first metal plating. 
and then we will repair that portion of the pulse engine with the metal plating and now we need a hermetic seal I think we have to get back in the ship to figure out where that is so yep here we go All right, so now we gotta go find that hermetic seal. We look back into this beacon here, this crashed beacon. And it'll point us in the right direction. And if I remember correctly, it's around 500 U away or something like that, roughly. Um, oh yeah, it gave us a planetary chart. We have to look at that, plot the route. Another thing we're going to do with this game is we're going to play this playthrough. It's going to be an actual playthrough because despite um, 900 away, it's a lot farther than I thought. Um, despite all the guides and everything I made before, we never really did a proper playthrough. And with the new structure of the the way the missions are listed and all that, I'd like to see how it's structured. Does it integrate everything in a way that makes sense, you know, that sort of stuff. It'd be kind of cool if it does. And then we won't miss anything. We won't miss stuff that we could have got earlier on, you know, that we spent maybe salvage data modules on or something we didn't have to. So, yeah. Yeah, there are a bunch of dihydrogen up. Now, when we get close to our destination, that's when the storm's going to kick on, so we want to be ready for that. So you're already getting the warning, so we probably shouldn't screw around anymore with gathering stuff and just kind of run. But of course, we suck at running because, you know, we're a brand new player. We don't have any upgrades for our exosuit. And, oh no, I'm stuck. No. Yeah, about halfway there. Ugh. This is so tedious in the beginning, I'm telling you. Yep, it's getting colder. So if you find a cave, you can always hop into a cave and let your um, shield heal itself, but we are nowhere near a cave that I can see, so we're just going to have to hoof it. We don't get there in time. We use what little sodium we have to replenish our shield, and then hopefully that'll get us the rest of the way. All right, 200 away. We should be there fine. Little jump there. Yeah, they give you just enough time. You know, it's like that false sense of uh, fear. Like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. You can make it. I can't think of a time that I didn't make it, but every time it always is the same thing. Like, oh, God, am I going to make it or not? All right, so we should get a hermetic seal out of here. And we did. Awesome. Let's go into this one. See if we can get anything out of here. Yeah, there's nothing. And I believe the storm is going to subside here shortly, so that's cool. We'll take that little bit of facium. And here's a cave. So this is kind of a boon right now that we found this because there's humming sacks in here. These are great early on. I have them in pearls. They're worth a few bucks. Get you a little bit of a head start on making money. There goes the storm clearing. And the mining beam here, we should be able to... Ah. 
Maybe those aren't cobalt. All right, these are cobalt. There we go. So yeah, we get a little cobalt too while we're here. Now, cobalt used to be the early game money-making method. You know, you'd get cobalt and then you would go crash economies. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way anymore. We're going to put in our analysis visor. And we're going to make a carbon nanotube. And we'll adjust that. Fix it. And now we can start making a little extra money by scanning things. As you see here, now we can get a little dihydrogen when we uh, hit these things too. It won't be much. Secondary elements are really not that prevalent when you mine stuff, especially early on before your uh, mining tool is any good. But we're going to take a moment and just gather up a little extra stuff here, because why not? Alright. So it wants us to look around for our ship. And there it is. I hope I tried to mark it, but... There we go. So we located our starship. We're going to head back to it now. Again, it's a long run in the beginning. I probably could have... Um, ...run back inside one of those buildings to maximize my hazard protection, but we should be alright. I don't know if another storm starts up or not, I really don't remember, but... ...it doesn't matter, we'll be fine either way. Ugh. So slow. Sometimes you just want to shoot as you run. You won't get lots of stuff, but at least you're getting something. Although it does slow you down considerably. halfway there again. Yeah, the first two, maybe three hours of this game are a little tedious, especially until you get to the anomaly. Once you get to the anomaly, as I said before, oh, here's some precious oxygen. The anomaly really opens the game up completely for you, especially if it's your, not your first character, you know, but like a second or third character. It's really fantastic because You've probably already unlocked some cool stuff in uh, the Quicksilver shop, so you know you can get some of that cool stuff. If you've got Expedition Awards, they'll be waiting for you in there, which is great. More oxygen. So you can grab those, and those are much better than what's in the Quicksilver shop. Quicksilver gets you mainly cosmetic stuff, whereas the... Uh, Twitch rewards and Expedition rewards can get you actual items like ships... Companions, um, multi tools, all kinds of neat stuff in addition to cosmetics. So, yeah, sooner you can get to the anomaly, the better. And then, once you're at the anomaly, it opens up all those new missions and all that, so you can really uh, go to town. All right, we are back at the ship. And it is time to fix this. With the Hermetic Seal. And there we go. We got to have a launch thruster. It's going to take pure ferrite and dihydrogen jelly. So how do we get those two things? Well, they're 
fairly easy. Uh, first off, we need a portable refiner. So we will make a metal plating. And then here we can make the dihydrogen jelly. Portable refiner, we can drop it down. Put ferrite dust in it. And then we can slap some uh, condensed carbon in it. Or regular carbon. Let it start producing. And then we can use that dihydrogen jelly to fix that while it's working. And all we need now is the pure ferrite, which we need 50 of. Now we've got it. We'll go ahead and repair that. And here we are about 20, 21 minutes into the game. And the starship is fully repaired. And we were ready to launch. So we'll pick up and you know, get the rest of that out of there and then pick up this refiner. Return to the ship and hit R2 to take off. Goodbye, planet. Hello, universe. All right, so now we got to test the starship. So it wants us to test flight controls and thrust by hitting R2. All right, that's done. Testing boost with the circle, okay. And now L1 and R1 to test the pulse engine. Orbital flights achieved. You can hop out of that. And now we get the first of many Starship communications when we go to outer space. So this will push us to our next destination which will be another planet and I believe we have to start building the base there if memory serves me correctly so let's get to it put in the data and quite honestly I don't like uh, first person view in the ship so we're gonna get rid of that go to third person and head right to that signal source Let's do it. I think this brings us into some kind of crash site, like a freighter crash, or that might be a little bit later. I've done this so many times, but it all gets jumbled up in my head sometimes. This is an approximate location. What do we got here? Well, let's just land here. Another ice cold planet. That's just. A oh, look, we found it. Okay. That works. We'll have to decipher the signal and see what happens. All right, so we need chromatic metal to make a base computer. And to get that, we need carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen jelly. While we're here, we're going to grab this. It'll give us a free uh, navigational data. Yeah, is that it? That's it. Okay. So, can we make another dihydrogen jelly? Yes, we can. Can we make two nanotubes? Yes, we can. Go to the multi-tool. And we will install the terrain manipulator. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now what it wants us to do, and we'll scan some animals while we're here, make some money is we need to find some copper which we just found 
so that we can mine it and turn it into um, chromatic metal using the little refinery thing. So, yeah, this is old hat. Get some more of this stuff because we're going to need it. And grab some oxygen because we're going to need it. I'm trying to think real hard. What are we going to do different now to make money? Now that the whole um, cobalt thing is not going to work. That's a good question. Because making money early on basically puts the game in easy mode. And it's fine if it won't go into easy mode. And there's no easy way to make money early on. But there's got to be something. Because let me tell you, it can get frustrating in the game to... You know, find something really nice that you want, a new ship, or, a, you know, you come across a freighter that you want to get, or a frigate, or whatever, and you can't afford it because you don't have the, the units. That's frustrating, but, you know, maybe that's, maybe that'll enrich the experience, actually, because, quite frankly, it got to be super simple. You know, the more I played, and with each iteration of the, you know, each time I started a new character, it just got easier and easier to part was almost silly. So, in any case, there's our ship. We're going to go back to our ship. Switch back to the mining beam. Yellow carbon. Yeah, I expected that. You know, I looked at the price of resources and it went down considerably for everything. Now, we could still do the whole crashing the economy with carbon, I imagine, but being that it got nerfed in price so much, it's not going to be nearly as effective as it was before. So that is definitely an issue. remember if I got this or not. Now you're going to want to grab all the nav data as you can. Yeah, I already did grab that one. Uh, the main reason is you could throw drop pod coordinates into them. There's our copper. Or you could throw, you can, um, I'm sorry, you can use those nav data to buy drop pod maps, which with the new setup, I think the storage is a lot bigger than it was before. Now, it's a lot cheaper to upgrade, but it's still a lot bigger, so it's going to require a lot of time, energy, and resources to totally max out your exosuit and everything else. And while you can get uh, modules to upgrade your uh, your starships and your freighters and your multi-tool and all that stuff, you can't get them for your exosuit. The only thing you can do there is either buy new storage or use drop pod coordinates to go find new storage, which really isn't that tough. You know, it takes a little bit of time and effort, but it's not too bad. And it seems to be especially easy now as the things needed to upgrade are very common and easy to find. And you'll probably, if you don't already have what it's asking for, you'll have at least what you use to make what it's asking for in your possession by the time you're ready to start doing that. Yeah, so, depending on how many uh, of those maps you have, you know, you may want to start gathering up at least one every uh, every system you go to as well as buying from the uh, buying from the actual space station you know any buildings nearby hmm I was hoping to find a building that I could put the space down near because that's always a help 
We'll get lucky. We'll fly around for a wee bit here. Let's see if we can locate a cool building to build next to. A trade terminal would be fantastic. Uh, no. That's just a uh, little beacon thing. Uh, if we don't find one, it's not going to be the end of the world. And it's definitely not something you have to do. Oh, yeah, here. Eh. Wouldn't mind one of those mining outposts either. That would be great. Anything that could have little value because early game resources are scarce and having the ability to just go buy stuff from a galactic trade terminal, which is the main reason I'd want one of those two buildings, would be a huge help. This looks like a factory. Keep looking. Here's a ruin. Those are always cool. Well, I'm not really finding anything useful at this point, and it's not the end of the world if we don't find anything useful. So the next building we find, which is right... Oh, look at that. A little mining facility. So yeah, this is where we're going to hang our hat and build our first base. That's going to be nice. And a little microprocessor. Those are very, very useful. Let's go gather up the... Oh, my support getting low. There we go. Got our little nav data here. Check out these two buildings just to see. Probably get some nanites and maybe a word in one of them or maybe uh, a few units. I don't think we have much in the way of units. 1400. Yikes. We're doing a very bad job of making money the initial time. Probably do some more scanning. That'll help. As you can see, you don't get a lot from scanning early on, but every little bit helps. Especially in the beginning, and let's go ahead and recharge this life support. And we're going to gather this buried technology module because those are hugely useful. And the sooner you start gathering them, the better. So, salvage data. Not a lot, but better than nothing. Alright, well we went into those two buildings. Oh yeah, there's another one over here. Usually around these setups there's these damaged machineries, which are always worth checking out because you get usually some slime of some sort. Goop, whatever. And that can be made into nanites after a few steps um, sometimes you get rusted metal there's a few different options but that's usually what it is and there's usually buried data around it but not this time all right that's okay let's go inside check it out and then we will start on the base and get the initial base done and so a couple advantages one here's a free landing pad you don't use up uh, any fuel when you get up and land from one of those places, so that's fantastic. Another nice thing is you get a galactic trade terminal, which gives you a wonderful place to 
go ahead, buy and sell items. If we had any extra crap, and like marrow bulbs, yeah, we can get rid of those. We really don't need those right now. Uh, the album and pearls, we want to get rid of because that's just a money-making item. Uh, the geodes, those are useful for other things. So, all right, we sold what we can sell. And then you always have uh, the potential to find a cool weapon in these places. Like, you know, not this time. More often than not, it's disappointing like that. Got a little dude to talk to. He might teach us a word. Um, give him money. So look at that. We got a module for a hundred um, units. What module was it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. A little C-Class Photon Cannon for the Starship. So we can throw it on our Starship. And we've instantly upgraded our damage potential on it for a mere hundred shekels. All right. And this guy sells all kinds of cool stuff like blueprints. Might find some useful ones like that. But some of these we get for free, so we're not really going to start looking at buying any of them but he also sells very useful uh, components microprocessors antimatter housings he doesn't sell them in large quantities and they are kind of pricey exosuit upgrade chart Ooh, look at that navigation data all right so that's it for that so as you can see, there is some uh, usefulness to building a base in this location. So we're going to put down our computer, make the game happy. And then we will go ahead and upload it to see if anybody had any claims on this base. see they didn't so now we're gonna go ahead and access the base computer get the couple blueprints that wants to spit out at us return boom boom and now it wants us to construct a basic base so not sure how much carbon we have oh we got plenty all right, so first things first, it wants a floor. We'll go into build mode and we'll build this. Um, actually, we're gonna build a wall first. And we're gonna put it right off the actual landing pad just because why not there we go we'll put the floor panel on top of it and we'll delete the wall underneath it build our three walls one two three build the doorway And then it wants a basic uh, roof, if I'm not mistaken, right? So you see, now we have a goofy looking little floating base here. But we can hop right into it and be safe. Not that we couldn't do that with the existing building already. This is just basically a, uh, you know, we're just doing it because you have to. Extract plans. And we have a construction research unit now. That's perfect. So we'll be able to build that and continue building on our base. But we'll do that in the next episode.